twin turbo, ceramic ball bearings, variable valve timing, high flow rate fuel injectors, and a free flow exhaust. Pretty cool technology. But let's be honest, if you're driving your kids to school or getting groceries, all that amazing and sometimes confusing technology probably doesn't matter. But if you're looking to win a race, you do want to have a look under your hood because what you got in the engine room might make the difference between winning the race or losing it. Running a business used to be like getting groceries, but that's no longer the case. Now you're in a constant race against your competition, disruptors, and changing customer expectations. So those turbos and fuel injectors now matter a lot more than they used to. Good managers used to be the ones who don't get into the details, who manage by objectives alone. But now it's actually the exact opposite. IT leaders need to understand the decisions made in their IT engine room. Tasty salad I have here, but I should have a look at what's at the bottom. Oh, it's all iceberg lettuce. Not exactly what makes my business competitive in the 21st century. I used to be technical, now translates into I used to understand what runs my business. Because the technology decisions that you make today impact your business's, business's future success. So managing by objectives alone is no longer acceptable. If you look to reduce your IT cost, you might find yourself with old technology and in rigid contracts. Probably not exactly what you had in mind. Let me fix the salad. Ah, very nice. Fine-grained component architecture. Perfect. Separating leaders from the engine room leads to separation and local optimization. Local optimization is something that occurs naturally but leads to significant problems. We all know that from visiting a doctor or maybe a government office that runs very efficiently, but you have to take a number and wait for hours in line. And that cost is not measured in the local optimization. The sum of local optima is rarely a global optimum. Yet, customers see you from end to end. We at Amazon know this very well. Let's assume we have the item that you ordered in inventory in our fulfillment center. And we box it very nicely in an environmentally friendly manner. We load it on an all electric delivery truck and drive it on the most efficient route to your home address. But for whatever reason, we don't manage to hand you the package. From a customer perspective, that is not a 90% achievement. That is 0% because the customer didn't see the package. That's why at Amazon, we always focus on the customer because it allows us to see things end to end. Organizations are prone to local optimization because they're organized in layers, all the way from the executive penthouse down to the IT engine room. Layering has benefits. It allows organizations to separate responsibilities and reduce complexity. But layering also can become a hindrance in times of rapid change. You will have slow communication and play some sort of telephone game where the message of the top becomes something quite different by the time it ends up at the bottom. And this can happen inadvertently or because each layer of the organization adds their own little flavor to the message that travels through. So seeing the whole stack end to end becomes very important because what looks nice and solid at the top might be built on a very unstable foundation. And because taking layers out is a rather delicate affair, the next best thing you can do is have a better connection across those layers. That's what I call riding the architect elevator, translating technical detail into meaningful terms for executives. Time to reopen that hood. In a famous car anime, a young driver 
receives a piece of technical advice before every race. So that he just doesn't up his game by being a better driver, but also by taking advantage of his technology stack, so, so, so to speak. At the beginning of one race, he's told that the only difference between his car and his competitor's car is that he has a twin turbo setup, whereas his competitor has a single turbo. Otherwise, the cars are identical. So as expected, the race remains undecided for most of the time. Until our hero can translate that technical detail into a competitive advantage. He realizes that his twin turbos are smaller, so they spool up faster and give him power more quickly. So he decides to nudge his opponent's car, forcing them off the gas. He speeds up faster and he can pass his opponent, winning the race. Now, he didn't win because he knows exactly what a turbocharger is made from or how it works, but by being able to translate the technical detail into a competitive advantage. Being in touch with the engine room doesn't mean understanding every technical detail. But be, to be successful in today's age and not start behind the eight ball, leaders need to understand the relationships and the consequences of technical decisions. And IT teams can become better at explaining and making those relationships clear. Because once you can explain something, you really understand it. Business leaders are used to making complex decisions and understanding trade-offs. They don't need any training in that part. But technology and sometimes the technology teams have managed to sufficiently obfuscate some of the technical decisions so that the executives are no longer connected to the reality in the engine room. And that is a dangerous disconnect. At an IT training event for senior executives, I observed a COO and a CFO discuss system availability and server utilization. And they realized that the traditional approach of warm standby servers actually leads to underutilization and excessive capital investment. And they also understood why modern resilient cloud architectures allow for higher utilization and lower cost. They were in touch with their IT engine room. But it's not all about technology. So in the next episode of TN Transformation, we'll be looking at new business models. Music